Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my feature overview of Daedal OS, my desktop environment in the browser. Uh, today's video powered by Red Bull, as usual for my Saturday videos. And yeah, I'd like to just jump right into it and I'm going to start going through all the features and we're going to learn together all the different things it can do uh, that I can remember to show you in this video. So let's take a peek. We'll just jump into it here. What I've done this time is I've set up, here's the Chrome browser on the, on the left here. I have this bar on the bottom is the is my actual windows. So as you can see here, typical windows start menu with uh, the typical styling and effects that it has. This is a typical windows start button, uh, start menu, taskbar with uh, taskbar entries and their effects. And then you'll see here what I've emulated on mine. This is my website right here. So if you were to say just be on google.com and then you go to dustinbrett.com you will get a your own custom version of the, the experience, basically. And you will have a similar a start menu where you hover. You can also get the scroll bar when you hover over it. If you hover away, it disappears, that effect. I've got the spotlight effect where it kind of shows a little more visuals on the uh, where your cursor is. On the hover here, we got the menus. We can click here to open the documents folder. And you'll see here that that documents folder kind of matches opening let's say one of the folders on uh, on my computer here. That's a folder on my computer. You see this is outside the browser, but this one's inside the browser. This is actually simulated, as you'd say. And it has all the same functionalities for the most part, double clicking to maximize, double click the icon to close. Uh, it's got maximize. As you see, when you hover here, we get little tool tips of the, all the information. You can right click the menus to also trigger all these effects. Go to restore, you can close from there and you get the fade out effects. I also put my blog posts on here so you can check out my blog posts. You can resize these windows as well. You can minimize them. As you can see when I hover, I also get that same effect. That's a dynamic effect that happens all the time. Uh, even when it, or it's like visually updating. If you see here, I'll open up my Doom. Uh, Doom I have, the video game Doom. That's coming from a shareware version of Doom from a DOS emulator. We'll just play the audio here as well, although I think it's a little bit loud if I remember correctly. It's... There we go. That's not so bad there. Get the nice little tune. I'm not sure if we can pick that up too much on the, the microphone. And, and yeah, you can maximize this as well. Same thing. You can right click it in and you see here if I were to hover, you can see it animates on the little mini window as well, which is called the peak window. And I can close it from there if I'd like as well. Getting back to my blog posts here. Uh, I've made up my own format, WHTML, which is basically just like HTML. If you want, you can right-click one of these files and you can open it in my Monaco editor, which is kind of a mix between Notepad and VS Code. Uh, it's using Monaco, which is the same thing VS Code uses. So you see it has the similar right menu clicks. It has the command palette. It has the same way to search uh, and all those kind of features. I've also added some, uh, some of my own custom features to the status bar. You see this button here will actually add a prettier printing. So if it's HTML, it has prettier HTML it can do. And you see here it kind of cleans up the HTML and make it a little more legible for us. It'll measure the lines. It tells you the, what's selected. It'll tell you that it's HTML. So that's some of the things Monaco can do. And also if you press Control S, you can save edits. Uh, I, can open, I can just double click it to open in the default program, which is TinyMCE, kind of like a WYSIWYG editor. That's what I show my blog post in. As you can see here, when you first open it up, it's in like read-only mode. But there's also a design mode if you want, which we'll get into in a second. So we can see the full thing here, or we can make a smaller one and scroll through it. I've got it where if you click the pictures, it actually opens them in the photo app that looks a lot like the Windows photo app. It's using pan and zoom, so it's got some pan and zoom effects there. If you resize the window, they'll reset. Oh, I had a little bit of a weird resize there. Um, ah, yes, because this is an iframe. There is still some, there's the occasional bug. Uh, people have been very nice to mention them to me, and that's been great. But they're few and far between, I'd like to say. You can shrink these windows to be extremely small, like that small, or you can make them bigger. We can also make this photo full screen if we want. And like I said, you can zoom in, it'll show you it there. We'll close this one for now. Uh, you have all the same selections as well. You have a little selector here that I could say, pick these three files, and I can drag them out of this folder and onto here. It'll actually put them there. Uh, and I can actually go, this is here in the real operating system. If, we, if Also, another thing I can do is I can click here and click this button to reset everything back to default. So if we reset it back to default, I can take all these files here and I can actually drag them on. 
and you see it copy them and there was a little copy animation and it all happened pretty fast. Now you see this icon here, this is actually an mp3 file and it's reading the cover art from the file. And if I double click this, it's going to open it in WebAmp player. And this is a free to, free to play audio, but I'm still going to not take a risk with it. But as you see here, you can open it up in WinAmp. And while it's playing in WinAmp, you could go into the music that I have and I could switch to the def a different song. Such as the old uh, default WinAmp song. Or not song, I guess. That's just the starter of audio. I also have some other Winamp skins, and my classic one that I used to like was the Spyamp one. And you can load that on there and go back to playing that other music you were playing before. And that can also attach to the corners here, so you could kind of just leave it there sitting, playing in the corner. Well, you could look at some other things. Also, here's a video. This is an MP4 file, and again, it created a cover art thumbnail for it, actually based on the real video. It's not pre-generated, pre that's automatically uh, created. Just a little default video here. This is using VideoJS. It's got some features, but not a huge amount. I've emulated the video land look here on the, the, the menus, which is uh, the same one I use as well. This is all on a website, mind you. Uh, as you can see, it's got right-click menus. In the case of an ISO here, the default action is actually to open it. So it can actually read compressed uh, or ISO files. And you can look and look at inside it like that, or I can right click it and open it in a, vir a program called Virtual 86, which is actually an H X86 emulator, and it'll actually run this copy of Linux, and you can actually boot all the way into Tiny Core Linux and uh, with networking support actually via via WebSockets proxy. Not particularly fast. I would still say this is a, in some ways proof of concept, but it's it's something fun you can do, and you can just drag ISOs in, drag anything you want into the website. Uh, here's a picture I can drag in there as another example, a picture there. Um, another one I actually wanted to show is a wallpaper here that I can drag in. Let me just put my wallpaper image here. I didn't mean to move it, but whatever. Drag it onto my desktop. You'll see it creates a picture for it. Now I can right-click it, and I can actually set that as my wallpaper. So it can use the same wallpaper for, for both. Uh, I also have a PDF so it can view, such as the Calyx that I just set up over here. This is the PDF for that, so you, I could look at PDFs. Uh, let's say if you didn't have a PDF viewer, but you had this, you could just drag this onto my website and play PDFs. Um, here's a zip file. I can also open up compressed zip files. Inside, I can see an ISO. I could just drag it out of the zip file onto my desktop if I want. Right-click it from there, or I could have right-clicked it from inside the zip file as well. Um, and I can right-click it, and I can also open that in the x86 emulator. And as you see, you can run... Good old mem test for the for the IT folks. You might recognize that one. Made some kind of cool beeping sound there. We can reset all this back to defaults again here. Uh, what other good examples did I have? Let's take another peek at that zip file and see another thing we can do with zip files. I can right click it and I can actually press extract here and we can extract it right away. And if I another thing if I want is I could take let's say these four files and I can right click them and actually create an archive. And we'll actually get a new zip file. And you can see inside it, it has those. And if I want, I can right-click this, and I can say download. And I can actually get a real version. Now you can see this is it here on my real computer. And I can open that in Windows. And you see we get the same files. So it actually does properly zip it up for us just the way we want. And you can see the, the right-click menus are very similar. I've emulated a lot of the same features. We got delete. We got the ability to rename. And I've emulated the visual style for renaming as much as I can much as I was able to, mem86 plus, enter. Um, we can create shortcuts to things. So let's say we move this here into the, let's delete this shortcut. We move this into this, right into the root. And then we create a shortcut for it there. We take the shortcut, put it out there. And we can double click this and we can open it just like that. Does that make sense? What was this that I just made a shortcut of? I think that makes sense. No, that doesn't seem right. Oh yeah, because it's it's. Wait, does that make sense? I'm not sure it does. Well, I mean that's the fun of it. Honestly, is that you can play around with it. I think I messed up that shortcut there, but that's part of the fun to it. Um, let's continue to go on here. We can cut and paste. Let's say we go here and we want to right click these two and right click and press copy, and we can paste them here and get them there. Or I could delete them, let's say, and I could right-click them and press cut. You see that they go transparent, and then you can paste them in here. That's another fun little feature. I've also got keyboard shortcuts, so if we go in here and 
I pick these and I press control C, I can go over here and press control V and actually paste them that way. Same with this, I can do control X's. And if you see here, they're already here. So if I paste them, it'll actually paste them with the one that it'll prepend or append, sorry, to the file name. That's another Windows-esque behavior. And I can reset that again. I've got some other files in here, such as credits for the uh, all the awesome programs I was able to utilize to help make all this work. So that's something worth checking out at another date as I start going through the apps here. So we've already gone through a few of them. Let's take a look at some other ones. I've got a few example ones here. Uh, these aren't apps, but these are running on that x86 emulator. I've got like another OS is called Calibri. Another one is, is just a cut down version of Linux. Uh, as far as our emulator, there's another cool one here we got is Boxed Wine. I'll show you an example of that here by going to Notepad's website. If we go to Notepad++, this is a Windows application. We can go here, we can download this Windows application, the 32-bit version, portable zip. Let's grab that. Okay, so we got it there. I'm going to put it over here. And we're going to take it from my computer, my OS, put it onto here. And now if I right-click it and I say, Open with Boxed Wine, this is actually a Windows x86 32-bit application emulator. Now, it's slow. It's not great, but it is something fun to play with. So let's say if you were on a Mac, you could go to my website, take the zip, do exactly what I just did, and it would allow you to run a Windows application on my website and allow you to, I mean, fingers crossed. It's, it's worked in the past, but I'm not going to promise it. And there you go. So there's Notepad++. And this is running in my website, purely client side. Is it, uh, that's a Windows app, and this can, this is functional. This can do things. So that's that's a fun one that I I mean, just as I say that, I think I would press something that kind of jinxed it. But I've I've worked with that before, and it's been fine. So that's another fun one. And again, this is a zip, so I could say extract here, and we could see the folder contents here for the whole thing big zip file there. I've also got, so you can double click executables. I think it could even run just from straight up double clicking, but it does prefer to have these dependencies, which is why it's good if you can launch it from a zip file. Next emulator I've got, we've discussed the DOS one. Uh, Ruffle, That's that emulator is for flash files. So if we go here into my documents folder under flash files, I actually have a couple and one of them, maybe you uh, people from the, the aughts, the, the 2000s might know this one, Badger is the badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom. Nice. And if you don't know what that is, then I don't blame you because there's no reason you should, nor nor is it something to look up. Uh, but there's some other cool fun flash ones here. Like this one is like, is like a, another OS inside my fake OS in that someone's made a fake Windows it's got all these little, it's like a parody one with all these little bugs, but it's fun to still be able to play these because, uh, as most people know, Flash is kind of a dying thing. Ruffle is, is one of the few emulators that's kind of keeping it alive, and a lot of people are using that one. We've gone over Virtual 86. A lot of the games are also just from DOS. Uh, it's interesting which ones you can play. All the games that I'm hosting on my website are shareware, so they're kind of meant, meant to be given away in a way, but they're also very trial versions, and... They're, uh, they're basically like a demo, I would say, but they're, they're a lot of fun. I mean, they bring back nostalgia, and at the same time, you can go to different websites and find all sorts of these different ones. So there's one there. You can just jump right into it like that. Uh, and as an example of what I'm talking about, the, the place I have my emulator from, JSDOS, actually has this thing called the DOS Zone, they call it. Ooh. And the DOS Zone, like they say, have 1,900 games. And you can take most of these and just plop them right in. Let's say here, Earthworm Jim. Okay, let's say we want to play it online. And then how do we download it? Interesting. Easier said than done. But but these are, there's so many different sites like this. And another example of a way to do it would just be to type Earthworm Jim, uh, Earthworm Jim DOS shareware. And this is what you could do for all sorts of different games. DOS Game Archives is a great example of a site where they have a lot of these and I, I personally make sure to get the shareware versions but if you happen to already own it you can even just uh you could even plop a floppy disk in and drag drag the contents of the floppy disk onto my my website zip it up and it would run in the emulator just like that so here's the earthworm gym one it's like four megabytes downloaded in a second another cool thing you can do is you can drag right from the chrome downloads right into my website just like that so now it's there i right click and i say open in dos box 
Now you get to a DOS prompt and you just gotta look and see where it is. In this case, it's, uh, let's assume it's some kind of EXE. So we'll say directory, show me the EXEs. Okay, so let's say it's Earthworm Gym 2. Uh, maybe it's not. Let's say it's Earthworm Gym 1. Or maybe it's setup. It says run setup. This is the, this brings me back lots of good old setting up DOS memories. There we go. Yeah, this is the good old days. I mean, this is, this alone is nostalgia. It's just trying to get a DOS game to run. Uh, there we go. This cannot be right. Please quit. Oh, vertical frequency of VGA measured to be below 45 hertz. I mean, this is getting a DOS game working. That's the fun of it. I think the JS DOS ones are more finely tuned, so I, that's why I recommend that DOS zone. But you can have fun with it either way, and, and honestly, you can get it working. That's one thing fun with my website. You could extract the files. You could open them in the Monaco viewer, and you could... Just keep tweaking stuff till you get it going. One game that's not part of the DOS emulators is this Space Cadet. You people, Windows people might remember this one. This is another quite cool one. It's a loud one. But it, it works decently smooth. And we close it here. I've, I fixed a bug where that audio wasn't stopping. So that's kind of a fun one as well. And I like to refresh the page sometimes because... Uh, if you run enough of these apps all together, you can get a little bit of slowdown. I wouldn't say it's the most memory efficient program I have. Uh, getting into another one here, we got my browser. Uh, something I've noticed people really love doing is this browser inception, where you open my browser and then you open my website in the browser, and then you open another browser and you open the website again. Uh, one thing I've noticed with this is on Chrome, it wasn't allowing me, but you can just like make up a little piece to the URL. So if I just put question mark, whatever, it'll be ignored in the URL. I press enter. Now I can keep loading this inception and we can keep going with the color palette. Uh, again, I have to change the URL every time, question mark, whatever, and you can get you can get pretty deep on these. Let's let's see if I start maximizing these. Yeah, that's getting that's getting there. But that's a and you can see all the clocks stay pretty synced. That's another thing that I'm pretty proud of actually is how I've attempted to keep the clock very synchronous with the way that it first boots up, and syncs up with what the clock is telling it that it has as a time. Let's continue on. Let's look at other things. We can also resort files here. You see, I can move this over here. Move Doom right to the top. That's the most important thing. Um, I've already discussed that we can drag things out, such as that. We have our picture viewer. Let's go back and take another peek here. Dev tools is another fun one. Uh, this is kind of like, it's the same as like the real dev tools where if you press F12, it's not the same. But it's 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 nice to have, especially on mobile where you don't really have anything like dev tools. This gives you a little bit. It gives you some console messages. It gives you some information. It's not perfect, but it, it's pretty cool, I would say. It's fun. And you can actually access it by going Shift F12. I have it as a little shortcut there. I also have Shift Escape to open the start menu. There's another secret one. And I have a couple other shortcuts as well uh, that you might notice along the way as you play around with it. Uh, I don't completely remember them myself, so I, or I would tell you what they are. Let's keep looking. We've gone through the PDF viewer, we've gone through Monaco, we've gone through Photos. Terminal's another one I'm quite proud of. Uh, it's pretty much the only one left, too. You can get to Terminal from the Start menu, and it looks a lot like the, the DOS command prompt. Another way you can get to it is through Shift F10. Is another way that I've, uh, a little shortcut key I have. Now, if you type Help, you'll see that I've actually got quite a few commands here. Uh, these ones at the top are the commands, and these aliases are, are also commands, but they're the same ones at the top. So we have all the directory navigation. So let's say here we're in user public right now. We go directory. We can see the directory listing. I can go into the desktop and look at the desktop there. We can see those five files. You see, I can create a file here, let's say, called dustin.txt. And now if I do a directory command, you can see it actually has dustin.txt. And if I were to add something to that, hello, and I press save, I can actually do go back here and say type. Dustin. It has autocomplete too, by the way. Dustin TXT. And it actually has the content. You see, there's hello. Oops, I messed up the size there. I can actually fix it, but I like this perfect size when it first opens. So there was one example where you can do some stuff. What else do we have? We have clear, copy, we got date. We'll list the date. Uh, we also have a history for the console, so you can go up and down. You can do autocomplete as well. So if you see in the directory here, we got the icons folder, I can do CD capital I and press tab. It'll actually guess the icons part for me. So that's another little touch that I was pretty proud to be able to get in there. 
what other things can this do? Let's go back to help and see. I've also got some equivalent commands. So you can do dir or you can do ls. A lot of the Linux equivalents I've got in there. Delete, echo, exit. Git is a cool one I'm pretty proud of. That's another one. So let's go quickly. Here's my repository, by the way. This is an open source project, so you can check it out. Data OS, it's called. And if we go to the code here and we actually get the Git URL, from my website, you can actually clone Git URLs. Uh, local, like from purely client side. Let's check it out. So we open a terminal here. Let's go to the desktop. And then I'm going to do Git clone. And I'm going to paste in here my data list Git URL and press enter. And hopefully, unless it's broken now, it wasn't broken a second ago, but it looks like it is broken now, unfortunately. Dang it. Yeah, now it's giving me this weird thing. This is the one demo that I was a little worried about. So we'll forget about that one for now. But in the future, that will work. And it has it does work for me in development. But on production, I'm having a weird bundle issue there. So let's not worry about that one. Uh, what else we got up here? We got the history where it can tell you what, what commands you've typed. We got my license. It's open source license. Uh, Python, that's another cool one. We have the ability to run Python commands. Uh, I don't recall a lot of them offhand, but let's just say Python 1 plus 1. It's going to take a few seconds the first time as it loads all the scripts. Uh, but there you go. We got two. So take that as far as you want. You can run Python. I'm not sure how, how well it's going to work. It's a proof of concept thing. You can look at task list items. So let's say task list here. We can see the terminals, all that's open. Let's open Doom for a second here. We got Doom running. Now when we run the task list, you can see Doom as well. We copy its... Oh, darn it, I did it again. We copy its name here, like so. And I can say kill JSDOS. Oh, there's more to the name than that. Oh, that's so loud. So that process name is a little long. I'm thinking of getting PID numbers because that'll be easier. Let's do a simpler example. This one will have a smaller name. So this, there we go. This file has a smaller name. We'll copy this and now we'll say kill, paste the name in and say enter. And there you go. It'll kill the process. So you can see that the terminal is properly attached to the file system and to the processes. It keeps track of uptime. Um, what else does it do here? WAPM. That's another interesting one. WAPM allows me us access to the WAPM IO repository. So this is almost like a package manager for WebAssembly. An example of one would be Kause. That's a very simple example. Uh, one of the most generic ones, actually. So if you just type something in, you type in some text in it, and the cow will say that. And that's a program that will actually download from the internet on the client side. So we say Kause, hello world. I will do it like this. And there you go. We get Kause, hello world. So that's another thing that it has the ability to do. It also has the ability to get weather based on your IP address. There's the weather for where we are, where I am in Canada. And we got who am I? That's that pretty much just gives you your user agent. Nothing fancy there. I think I think that's it for that piece as well. Um, I would almost say that we've gone through a good chunk of things. Oh, another another nice one I wanted to add here. If you right click on the desktop, you can do add file and you can pick a specific file. Let's say this file here, and it'll add it. But something that I'm very proud of and that only works on Chrome is you can right-click and you can actually map an entire directory. So I can say here that I want to map my entire data list directory, let's say. And I'm going to say View Files. And now, just like that, I have the folder right there showing for me. And I can double-click it there. And I can see that this folder here actually is showing on my fake OS. So you see this is locked inside my window. But this is the same one that's actually running on my real computer right there. So they're pretty, they're the same, same thing. And I actually have the ability to delete things in that computer, add things to it and run things from it. You can see here that animated icons actually work for GIFs. This GIF is an animated GIF that it plays. Uh, but yeah, you can play all these files. So let's say we could try to do another one here. This is a different Linux, uh, damn small Linux it's called. And this is another one that it'll open without a pro well, I without a problem. I don't want to jinx myself. Yeah, there we go. So there's another Linux that it's going to try to boot. That visual is just part of the Linux boot up process. But that's, that's another cool feature that I like. And if you refresh the page, it will, that one, it always dismounts those because those, uh, you have to re give it permission every time. I think that's it. I think that I, that's a good enough overview for now. I don't want to blow everyone's mind too much and, and I'm going to have more videos to come. So please, if you like this video, throw me a like. And if you like these, my project, you like what I'm doing, you, you want to follow some other projects that I'm doing because I'm doing all sorts of different stuff in tech and different videos. And, and this is going to be the year for different videos. So 
please subscribe to me because uh, I'm, I'm going to try to give you the best content I can. And thank you for staying with me this long. Thank you for staying with me for the year of this project. And thanks for any support you want to give me for this project or any comments, concerns, criticisms, throw them in the comments. Thank you very much and goodbye.